In this video I will show you how you can build your own resistor by yourself out of children's play-doh and a few copper coins and some measuring equipment and the idea is to investigate the influence of the resistor length on the overall resistance of the resistor body. Let's say we roll um, a length of play-doh, we cut it in half and the formulas actually say that this cutting in half would also halve the resistance of the overall resistor and we will investigate here if this holds true or not. My name is Andreas from the Fearless Engineer and here we go. Let's start with a little bit of theory before we set out to build our own DIY resistor. If you have watched any of the previous videos on the concept of resistance you will surely know this equation here. If not um, I recommend that you do so before you continue in this video because it really lays the foundation for understanding what's happening, what's going on inside a resistor thus, such as this one here. You can see that um, there's a relationship between the current on the left side and the voltage on the right side, which is driven by the conductivity of the material, which is depicted by this uh, green color here, which, which uh, runs across the length of this um, resistor wire or body um, through which electricity flows on the right side and also by some geometric properties, which are the cross-section area A and also the length L. Um, you can really uh, e very easily deduce that if you increase the cross-section area, you also increase the current flow. And uh, if you increase the length of this, um, of this resistor here, you will decrease the current flow. And um, the same holds for, for, the for the conductivity here. If you decrease the conductivity, um, you also decrease the current flow. This idea of finding a relationship between the current on the left side and the voltage on the right side, as we have seen on the previous slide, and uh, making the relationship between the two as simple as possible, um, is brought uh, is, is moved further forward by introducing the concept of electrical resistance, which we have talked about in the previous video. And this concept expresses how poorly um, a body conducts the electric current. And we uh, introduce the letter R and summarize in it. Um, the parameters length of the conductor, cross-section area of the conductor, and multiply it in the denominator, multiply it um, by the conductance of the material. And we express by this that increasing the length also increases the resistance value, and increasing the cross-section area and also the conductivity, sigma, decreases the resistance value. And this simple relationship is what we want to explore in, in this video here, in a practical experiment where we build the DIY resistor. The main idea of this experiment is to investigate whether the equations we have looked at so far, which means resistance is influenced by length, is influenced by diameter, which means cross-section area, and is influenced by material conductivity, really hold. And in order to do this in a very simple manner, um, I took a bit of Play-Doh from, from my children's playroom and formed it into a cylindrical shape. And this is what we're going to use to conduct electricity through it and to measure the voltage drop, measure the the current through this uh, device and then figure out by applying Ohm's law, figure out the resistance value of this homemade Play-Doh resistor. And in order to conduct these measurements you can see two multimeters on the left side here. One is for voltage, the other one is for amperage. The voltage meter is connected via those um, red cables here. The amp measurements are performed by connecting the black cables. And what you can see here is the housing for the resistor. This housing this housing here consists of two parts. Uh, one is the yellow plastic body, which holds the Play-Doh cylinder, a cylinder one, once it's put inside. And this one is a connector coin, it's just a coin from my purse, which I, um, which I connected to this, to this housing via a spring, which means once we push against this spring, it builds a little bit of pressure and connects it very firmly to the Play-Doh body. If I don't do this, the connection will not be stable and also the measurements which we conduct will not be stable. This is why I have made this little um, spring contraption here. On the other side, there's also a copper coin and this is simply the other terminal of the resistor. Now, let's take a look at the actual resistor material. It's this roll of Play-Doh material 
And um, as you can see, the shape is more or less cylindrical. Um, this is not exact science which we are conducting here. Um, there are some, some imperfections here in this shape and it's more about the principle than really figuring out the conductivity of Play-Doh. So there might be some, some tolerances here and there, but the overall picture should fit to the equation which we have derived before. Now, in order to insert this um, Play-Doh resistor into the housing, we simply need to push back this side here to the left insert the resistor on both sides, then pull out the pliers again and we're good to go. Now the resistor is firmly connected to these two copper coins and once we conduct electricity through it, the electricity will flow through the resistor material and come out the other side and then run through the multimeter which measures amperage and also we're going to take a look at the voltmeter to measure the voltage drop, the energy loss across this resistor. But before we hook up the um, resistor to the actual um, voltage source and also the uh, amp meters and the voltmeter, let's measure the length of this uh, body here. It's at 9.7 centimeters and the diameter is roughly 1.5, 1.6 centimeters. So this is what we're going to use later on when we will compute the conductivity of this uh, of the Play-Doh material itself. Now let's uh, hook it up to the um, amp meter first. In order to do so we connect the first of these black uh, crocodile clips here to the left side of the resistor. Now the other one, the other crocodile clip, this one um, is uh, positioned after the electrons have passed through the multimeter uh, which measures the current and this has to lead back to the actual voltage source which, um, which powers the flow of electricity. And uh, this is um, connected via the other black crocodile clip here. This leads directly to the voltage source. So if we connect these two like so, we make sure that after the electrons have passed through the resistor and through the amp meter, they flow back to the voltage source. On the other side, the voltage source is connected directly to the uh, coin here, and now the um, electron or the, the current flows in here and flows out the other side. In order to measure the voltage drop across the resistor, we need to connect these two cables here. The first one measures the potential on the side where the actual um, power source is connected and the second one measures the potential directly on the other side of the resistor. And that's basically it. Now we are ready for the measurements. Let's turn on the power source. And as you can see, the voltage drop across the resistor is at 8.92 volts. The uh, negative sign here is something we can ignore for now. We're only looking at the absolute value here. So almost all the voltage drops across the resistor. The voltage um, for adjusted at the power source is at 9 volts. So we only have a little bit, uh, a little loss here in potential energy um, lost across the cables which are connected to this resistor. The rest is lost in full across the Play-Doh body. Now the current which we can observe is at 25 milliamps, 0.025 amps. This is the current uh, which is at this moment in time flowing through the resistor. And based on these two measurements what we can do is we conduct, we can co compute the actual resistance of this body of Play-Doh here. But before we do so we're going to turn off the power source once again and insert a resistor with a different size. And now we're going to build a shorter resistor of the same diameter and in order to do this we simply take this roll of Play-Doh and this shorter housing which is ex exactly the same built as the other one um, except from the length just for comparison you can see the two uh, placed next to each other and in order to fit this um, resistor body inside the smaller housing we simply need to cut it into a smaller piece and insert it in here exactly the same in the same manner as we did before. Now in order to compare the two uh, against each other we can also we also need to measure the length which is 3.8 centimeters. The diameter is going to be the same as before and now we will connect this shorter resistor in exactly the same manner as we uh, did with a longer one. So first the positive terminal of the power source and um, one, one connector of the voltmeter. Then we connect with this clip here, the amp meter as well as the negative terminal of the power source 
and we also need to connect the other clip leading to the voltmeter. And now basically we're good to go. We have a stream of electrons coming on the current flow coming in from the positive terminal um, on, on the right side, flowing through the resistor body and leaving the resistor body through the black cable here, leading through the amp meter, and we measure the voltage drop across the, the entire length of this shortened version of the Play-Doh resistor. Now let's switch on the power source once more. And as you can see here, the voltage drop across the resistor is at roughly 9 volts, just as before, a little bit less due to uh, loss of potential energy along the, um, the, the connectors leading from the voltage source to the actual resistor and also uh, through the, um, through the uh, amp meter, which is uh, connected in series to the resistor, so there's a little loss just as before, but roughly um, we, you, we can observe the same voltage drop here. Now for the current, the current is significantly higher than before. Before we, had 200, uh, before we had 25 milliamps flowing through the longer resistor, now we have 67. So we have more than doubled the current flow through the resistor, which fits to our theory that halving the length doubles the flow of current. And we're going to look at the numbers from, taken from these measurements to figure out if this really is accurate, if the numbers hold, and also what we can do is we can compute the conductivity of this Play-Doh material which I have been using here. But so far the measurements correspond to what we would have expected from the formulas which we have derived in the previous videos. Now let's take a look at the measurements which we have created in this very simple graph here. On the x-axis you can see the voltage in, in volts, um, which is basically the same for the two conductors. When we discuss Kirchhoff's laws, uh, especially the second law of Kirchhoff, then you will understand why this is the case and this uh, small discrepancy in the second digit after the comma um, basically is in the realm of measurement inaccuracies. The voltage drop across the resistors is roughly 4.9 volts in both cases. The current uh, through the resistors is not the same. It's only 12 milliamps for the long one and it's 22 milliamps for the short one. So it's almost doubled uh, the amount of current running through the resistor, which corresponds to this idea that by shortening the length we can decrease the resistance and thus increase the current flow. And in this measurement we can clearly see this relationship. Even though uh, the length um, decrease compared to the long one does not perfectly fit to the um, increase in current flow, but given the measurement inaccuracies and also the imperfections of this um, handmade resistor here, uh, which is not um, as perfectly balanced over the entire length, um, we, can, we can see very clearly, we can see the principle in these two measurements nonetheless. Now let's calculate the resistance from our measurements of current and voltage. We can simply um, divide the measured voltage by the measured amperage and in doing so we get the value of 413 ohms for the long resistor and we get a value of 224 ohms for the short resistor. These are the resistance values for our homemade DIY resistors. And next we want to compute the conductivity from our measurements of current and voltage. Uh, we have seen uh, this relationship uh, before and discussed it at length, so I will not go into any details regarding this equation here, but we can rearrange it uh, to, to put sigma on the left side, so the conductivity on the left side and all the other parameters on the, on the right side. And given our measurements, which is 12 milliamps for the long resistor, a length of uh, 0.097 meters, and then um, in the denominator, the product of voltage drop and cross-section area across this, across this resistor. We get this value here for the conductivity of our homemade Play-Doh resistor. And just to give you a comparison of what this value actually means and how it relates to other conductors, um, I have brought you um, the um, conductivity of copper, which is at 58 times 10 to the power of, of 6 amps per voltmeter. So clearly if um, you have to decide which one is the better conductor, obviously copper is leagues away from, from Play-Doh and um, also as we have seen in the experiments, Play-Doh is a very um, unreliable conductor which is not as stable as we would have liked to given the discre discrepancies uh, between the long one and the short one, but nonetheless Given those simple measurements we have taken, we can use the equations which we have found out so far to compute the resistance value and also to compute the conductivity for this very simple setup here. 
And let's quickly summarize the main results which we can glean from this video here. We have seen that a change in length has a direct proportional effect on the resistance of a conductor as predicted by the equations. If we increase the length, we also increase the resistance. And secondly, compared to copper and other metals, we have seen that Play-Doh is a really, really poor conductor, which can not be compared, which is leagues away to metallic conductors, which we have seen when we computed the conductivity of Play-Doh. But nonetheless, the value of a real resistor in a circuit, which is used in a circuit to dissipate um, energy and convert kinetic energy into heat, which is the main purpose of a conductor, um, such a real conductor is influenced and controlled by the same parameters as our DIY Play-Doh resistor used in this experiment here. So even though we have shown that Play-Doh is not as stable and as reliable um, enough to be uh, to be used in a, in a commercial context, obviously, uh, which was not the aim of this video, we can clearly show how this, how this um, relationship works, how this equation works, which parameters control it. And as we, when we discuss um, resistors and also the various types of resistors, we will look at the equations again, and then you will uh, use the knowledge from this video to understand in a very um, deep going way what's actually happening inside this um, colorful resistor housing here which you can see on the bottom right. That's all for now. If you have any questions related to this video, don't hesitate to drop me a comment down below in the comment section. Also, if you have any suggestions for future videos which you want me to make, please also leave a comment here. I wish you a nice day now, all the best and see you next time here on The Fearless Engineer.